Good morning YouTube, I'm PTT and welcome to my renewed Division 2 coverage. I know I've been away for a very long time and most of what I'm about to cover in the upcoming videos you've probably already heard, but hey, I want to get back to making videos and what better place to start than on a topic that is very close to me and one that will be most of, not all, but most of the be all and end all for me in the Division 2. I am of course talking about raids. Now, raids are something that are not to be taken lightly. Even the term raid itself should not be underestimated, and Massive have really gone out on a limb here, calling out their end game content as such. To me, announcing that a game has a raid in it is a big thing, and it comes with certain expectations, and those expectations are set extremely high. Now, for me personally, my experience with raids are Destiny, but I know a lot of people also have high expectations when it comes to raids due to their experiences with games like WoW. And again, for Massive to come out and say, hey, we have raids now, is a very bold move. But a move that I feel was indeed needed, and I actually have every faith that they will be able to pull off something spectacular come March. Now, there are a few things to talk about when it comes to these raids, but currently information is very limited. And personally, I'm very happy with that. So let's start talking with a topic I think Massive have to get right straight out of the gate, and that is is the flow of information and the secrecy that should surround raids when they're set to be the pinnacle of PvE endgame. Now, something we are all very well aware of is developers holding closed capture events with content creators where they actually get to go hands-on early with a game and record said gameplay and share that with the community at a set time. Something Massive cannot do is do this with the raids. The raids need to stay secret, they need to remain a mystery and they need to be set up as a big event that can be turned into a community wide effort to clear. If we look at Destiny for a moment and we look at how secretive they are with the release of information, then we have a really good place to start. Bungie always keep their raids quiet, the raid trailers are always very limited and show off very little in terms of the raid itself and this is an approach the devs have to take with the Division 2. Imagine how good it would be for the community to have a Division World's first raid race where millions of people log on at the same time in a bid to be the first team to clear the new raid. Having moments like this are absolutely amazing and to actually be a part of one, well, that's something you won't forget for a very long time after, even if you're not on the world's first team itself. I think going forward, Massive have to be very clear about the raid, but at the same time, keep as tight-lipped as possible. You know, we're aware it's a selling point, okay? Give us details like the release date and time, let us know what faction we might be fighting, but other than that, let everything else be discovered on the day and the many days after. Now, I know that raiding can heavily divide a community, as we have seen for the past few years in Destiny, but I would very much like to know your thoughts on the raid and how you would like to receive information from Massive between now and March. Would you like it to be kept secret? Would you like to know everything, all of the ins and outs before you go in? Guys, I would love to know down below. To me, personally, it's the secrecy and ability to discover things that makes a raid so compelling. And being able to work out its mechanics and puzzles are always more rewarding when you go in blind and have to figure them out in your team, opposed to everyone having watched a video on it previously. Now, having used the word mechanics, let's talk about those next. And what are we going to start off with? Oh, well, one of the biggest changes to endgame mechanics, and that is the ability to go into them as an eight-man fire team rather than a four-man. When raids were revealed at E3, one thing that may, they made a point of mentioning is that the pinnacle, super hardcore endgame activity would be playable as an eight-man team. And that straight away got my attention for a number of reasons. First of all, the fact I can now play with seven friends at the same time rather than just three. That's just awesome, and I hope there are going to be other activities inside the Division 2 that also allow us to form bigger groups. But the second reason I got excited is because it got me thinking about what it meant to actually have an eight-man team in the game. Now, this is all speculation, but let's read between the lines here. Eight people should mean that the raid area should be bigger than anything we have seen in the Division world to date, and it now has to accommodate eight people instead of four. It should mean that the mechanics have teams splitting up and doing various things to progress, as now there are more people, the mechanics will instantly become harder as communication will play a very vital role in getting everybody to not just work together, 
but to do things in a coordinated manner. And if the mechanics are indeed team related, like we all hope they are, then having this many people in it could really ramp up the pressure to compete it, as there are more people that can make mistakes and cost the team to wipe. Now, in terms of actual mechanics, we obviously have no idea. And I hope it stays that way until we all get to hop into it but I would personally like to see many similar style mechanics to Destiny Raids where there are puzzles to work out, special methods to kill bosses and secrets hidden in every dark corner as these are what make raids exciting and fun. And while yes, I understand that not everybody likes the way Destiny Raids are done, I personally am a very big fan of them and I think that when the raid does finally drop in March or April, whenever it actually gets released, we will find out that Destiny has very much made an impact on how the level designed the raid for The Division 2 and hopefully the days of bullet spongy APCs are indeed long gone. Now, I could go into why I think the devs have spent a lot of time looking into level design and why Destiny may or may not have played a big part in how they've done things, but for time's sake, I won't. All I shall say is look at the evolution of the Division 1 incursions and legendaries, and it's pretty clear that the original direction for incursions and things and the future raids were not what was originally planned back in 2015, 2016, and games like Destiny, along with community feedback, definitely changed the direction for Massive. And let's be honest, from the Division's first incursion to the last, there was a mighty difference, and I think we can all agree it was for the best. And the best going forward is to look at what your competition is doing well and what's well received by community members, as this is, after all, a business as well as a game. Anyway, Let's move on now to our final topic for the video as I don't really want to waffle on too long and I actually fear I may have done that already. Our final topic is raid specific loot. I'll start off with a quote. Specific loot makes you stand out to other players. Now, what this means exactly is a mystery, but I think we can have oh, a pretty good educated guess that this line refers to vanity items. It's an educated guess because the Division 1 has vanity items upon completing incursions and legendary missions, and those are end game activities. But it's also an educated guess because it says makes you stand out, and what else makes you stand out than raid specific vanity items? And that are very clear from the raid and are unobtainable anywhere else in the game. Now, if you don't play The Division 1 and you're watching this and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, think cosmetic items like jackets, trousers, hats that may have a certain design to them that will be specifically for that activity. Similar, in fact, to Destiny Raid shaders or hey, how, say, Vault of Class armor looks different to any other armor in game. If you see someone wearing it, you know they're a damn good PvE player because they've completed this super hard challenging activity to get this certain bit of loot. And again, while this is just me trying to read between the lines, I think we will find out that that is exactly what Root Massive will go down with raid specific items and that's cool. We all love having some cool vanity items to show off, but I'm personally also hoping that they go a little bit further and go back to having raid specific gear sets and raid specific exotics that don't drop anywhere else in game just like the good old 1.1 days when you had to farm falcon lost for gear sets or say the warlord because that was the only location they dropped in i also hope that if indeed they do add raid specific gear sets then the set bonuses on these sets will have raid specific talents that would help you complete the raid and make it a tad easier the more you had of it as an example let's say you were facing cleaners Having talents like while in the said raid, you deal more damage to cleaners while taking less damage from cleaners. Or while in said raid, specialization ammo drops more often, etc, etc. Then you not only give players something to grind for, but you instantly add another reason for players to replay said activity because they will want to get full sets of gear. I mean, that's one reason I grinded out so many Destiny Raids because I wanted full armor sets and I wanted the raid specific exotic. And while Massive may not go down this route, and only time will tell, I seriously hope they do have something that is raid specific than just vanity items. Now, a little kind of snippet here, guys, okay? I remember, I can go, go back to Destiny, I can remember the Vault of Glass, I remember going into Quota, Wrath of the Machine, King's Fall, and I can remember 
getting my gear. I can remember the first time I got the Necrochasm to drop or the Vex Mythoclass. These are moments that will stick with me for years to come because they took so long to get. They were super rare when they finally dropped. I was so, so excited. It was like, like a little kid in a chocolate factory at Christmas. And that is a feeling that has been missing for me in the division for a really, really long time and something that I hope that they can pull back. You know, I want to get a bit of loot and I want to be excited to have it. You know, like when I first got my Urban MDR, I was so excited to finally get it. And I haven't had a moment like that in the division for a very, very, very long time. And, you know, raid specific loot, whatever way they go down it, this could really open up, you know, the doors to let all of that back in again, you know? It, that's just me guys now i've gone on i feel for far too long guys but i hope i have dropped you some information you found helpful but if it didn't and you already knew all the information then well that's cool too i'd love to know what your thoughts are on everything i've spoken about in the video as i actually feel and eh, it, it is pretty often the case that my opinions vastly differ to many others and you can't beat good old debates in the comment section i also want to leave you with a parting gift courtesy of gamertag radio and julian Geraghty, and that comes in the form of the gamertag radio podcast recorded at e3 where paris and his fellow hosts actually sat down and talked about the division 2's endgame and raids with julian and it does actually make for a very interesting listen so check it out in the link in the description head over listen to it hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as i did and that's it guys that wraps up my first return video covering information on the division 2 if there's a particular video you'd like me to make next then please of course do let me know down below thank you very much for watching as always i promise i will get back into this youtube thing a little bit more often hopefully i won't waffle on as long when i get back into it and i can kind of find my grooves again and who knows, I may actually go back to scripting videos rather than trying to just make notes and, and go from it. But yeah, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I will see you all soon. Have a good morning, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. And until the next one, I'll catch you all soon.